Yo, what's going on, guys? Your boy Ooch. Um, so let's. I'm gonna be completely 100 with you right now. I was not planning on making a video today. I was actually planning on chilling, catching up on anime because I actually been catching up on manga. But um, someone in my Discord, funny enough, uh, shared with me a video. He said, Uchi, have you heard about this rumor that Bakugo was not even is, but was the second user of One for All? So you have to think, like, okay, like, based off of the movie that just happened, and spoilers, I should have said that before, but this this complete video, this video right here that you're watching right now is complete spoilers, okay? Spoilers onto the movie, spoilers onto the manga that's going on in My Hero Academia right now. But basically, long story short, Bakugo got the access to One for All uh, during the, the climactic final fight of the movie. It was a beautiful scene, very well done. Um... And I'm sorry I haven't gotten my um, review of that movie out yet, but a lot has been happening in my life. But that's besides the point. Um, this dude, I've never, I've, I, I have never heard of this theory. I've never heard of this of Turtle Quirk. Um, might be a My Hero Academia content creator, for all I know. I'm not really sure. I haven't done any research on this person. I have never heard of this theory at all. But the reason why I'm doing this video now, and the reason why it's raw, and the reason why it's one shot right now, because it's a reaction because I'm not going to lie. Going into this, I was like, there's no way this is a real theory. Like, there's no way this is even possible, right? Like, I thought just by hearing it, it was basically just someone being um, misinformed based off of what they saw out of the movie uh, Heroes Rising that just came out. But... It goes deeper than that. So I'm not going to start it from the beginning. I'm actually going to start it where I paused it. Because this is something that I didn't even realize. And it had me pause it. And I was like, okay, I'm making a video. So this is a reaction to this theory. Apparently Bakugo was the second user of One for All. Okay, so there's a time loop theory. Now, I did not think that My Hero Academia was going to go this, this route. I did not ever anticipate them ever having some kind of jump to the future and back to the present state you know he's already mentioned Aerie's quirk and how Aerie has the ability to rewind an individual person um all the way back towards like not even existing we've seen it with Deku but enough out of me let's just freaking watch this and see if this guy makes me freak out even more during a certain arc in the manga Deku essentially went inside the core of One for All and was able to see the spirits of its previous users. See, now like, when we zoom in at the end, I did not peep this when I read it. characters who've been intentionally blurred out That's by fucking her Bakugo. One of There's them a... will immediately catch your attention. I mean, it's not even just the hair. Look at the gauntlets on his arm. This clearly looks like a silhouette of That's a more grown up version insane. of Bakugo. And let's be real if I showed you this silhouette in a totally different context and asked you which character. He, he has my attention completely. Ever since once he said that, he had my contention, uh, my attention completely. Now I am, now I am fully invested. I want to hear him out now. Um, and yes, like I haven't, I haven't finished watching this video at all. But like, I just wanted to point that out. So there we go. What do you think this is? Come on, there's no way you're not saying Bakugo. Horikoshi is a writer who has meaning behind every panel he writes. That's facts. The fact that he's intentionally blurring out this silhouette should tell you something. He wouldn't make one of them so obviously look like Bakugo if there wasn't some kind of meaning behind it. But I know what you're thinking. How could this be Bakugo, given that Deku was in fact looking at the previous users of One for All? Well, my friends, right. the answer essentially boils down to this man, All for One's brother. Imagine this. Like him, you possessed a quirk that allowed you to transfer quirks, but you could only ever use this power if someone eats your DNA, like a strand of hair, and you simultaneously have to will them to have your quirk. Being completely rational, there is no scenario in which you ever just happen to discover that, right. not even by accident. In the world of My Hero Academia, there are no manuals, there is no book that tells you how to use your own individual power, right. and on that basis, the notion that All For One's brother just happened to discover that he could transfer quirks if he wanted it to be passed on while someone was eating his DNA is quite frankly impossible. Even the master of quirks himself, All For One, believed that his brother was quirkless. That's partly the reason why he gave his brother the stockpiling power in the first place. No one knew this guy had a transfer quirk. And the nature of the quirk meant that no one would ever discover it at random either. But the main point is this. 
the only way the brother could have found out is if someone told him it was there. Nanashimura was told by her predecessor, she then told All Might, and All Might told Deku. And can we all remember how shocked Deku's face was when he heard that he had to eat a piece of All Might's DNA? It's just not something that people would naturally think to do. So with all that on the table, how did the first user of One For All find out that he could transfer quirks? There is not a single person alive in his time, not even his older brother, who was aware of this power and could have told right. him. The answer has been staring us in the face. Bakugo, one of only a handful of people to ever know of One For All, was sent back in time by an older version of Eri who had mastered her rewind quirk to show the first user that he could transfer quirks, thus becoming the second user himself and completing the fixed time loop. What? And he doesn't change the past by doing this either, because he always was the second user. And before we properly dive into this, let me just briefly explain the theoretical concept of a fixed time loop. Okay. This is a concept in physics that is quite similar to a self-fulfilling prophecy. In a time loop like this, a sequence of events is triggered by one specific event. But that specific event that caused everything to happen was actually the result of someone time traveling back and causing that event. But this is where it gets really trippy. Okay. Because the person who went back in time to cause that event and, you know, set everything in motion only did so because that event had already occurred in their time. That's what we're dealing with here. Bakugo lived in a world where One for All had always existed but was then sent back in time to tell the first user how to use it, but he was only able to do this because One For All had always existed and therefore he had the knowledge necessary to go back and tell the first user. But anyway, with the time travel explanation out of the okay, way, I'm going right. to explain to not, you how like everything ties you, but... in together. We established earlier that Shigaraki is getting a power-up in the manga that will allow him to somehow take One For All. On the basis that Horikoshi is not a writer, who just put stuff like that in there for no reason and just to troll you, Shigaraki will at some point in the future take One For All from Deku. Uh, with the power of One For right. All, coupled with his already powerful Decay Quirk, and the full army of the Paranormal Liberation Front, he will destroy Hero Society. And for the record, if you don't know what the Paranormal Liberation Front is, then you should probably watch my video breaking down the My Villain Academia The villain arc, arc is actually anyway, OD, guys. After Shigaraki takes One For All, he fulfills his dream of destroying society. After this, there'll likely be a time skip, and this is something that Horikoshi has actually hinted at recently in an interview he did for the new My Hero Academia movie. Fact. After a sufficient time skip, I believe that Eri would be able to focus her quirk in a way that would allow her to rewind people back in time, if only for a couple hours or a few days. And we spoke about this earlier, but this is a logical application of her rewind quirk. Rather than rewinding the individual, she can now rewind the time directly around an individual, thus sending them into the past. But moving on, given that Shigaraki has That's One For All, big, he's okay. able to talk to the vestiges within One For All, one of them being his grandmother, Nanashimura. While all hope might seem lost for the heroes, Bakugo, Deku, and Nanashimura have a grand plan that transcends time itself. Remember, because Bakugo is the second user of One For All, Nanashimura, as the seventh user, has already seen his memories from before he travelled back in time. Therefore, she knows the sequence of events that occurred in order for him to go back in time. And because she has this knowledge, she sets the events into motion by telling Shigaraki that Bakugo is the true creator of One For All and that as long as Bakugo is alive, the heroes have hope. What? This would cause Shigaraki to go on a hunt for Bakugo, who is now older due to the time skip. Now, why did he look like Genos from One Punch Man? When I saw this, I was like, this guy looks like Genos, but that's freaking Bakugo from the future, apparently. Okay, okay. With Shigaraki looking for Bakugo, the heroes will naturally catch word of this, and through the grapevine, they'll find out that Shigaraki believes that Bakugo is the true creator of One For All. This sequence of events will send the heroes on a massive arc to find the last remnants of the quirk-enhancing drug, Trigger. Now, Trigger was a big part of the My Hero Academia Vigilante spin-off, but it's also become a big part of the manga as well. In the Overhaul arc, we see numerous characters using Trigger, with the most notable probably being Mimic. To put it bluntly, Trigger makes any character overpowered. Now, okay. when the heroes eventually I haven't find this, any they'll give the drug to Eri, which will supercharge her quirk beyond comprehension and allow her to send Bakugo back in time over a hundred years so that he can complete the causal time loop by telling the first user of One For All how to transfer the quirk. Bakugo essentially sacrifices himself as he's taking a one-way ticket back in time 
with no hope of return. This would be what? an amazing moment for his character and would show insane development. <laughs> Bakugo has never been the type I of don't character know, man. to make the sacrifice. But this sacrifice, by going back in time, it would ensure a few things that I haven't even mentioned yet. So firstly, he'll meet the first user of One For All and tell him that he has the ability to transfer his quirks. Then he'll receive the power from that user and become the second holder of One For All. Bakugo will then help cultivate the power through the years. But what I hadn't mentioned is this. In the manga, it's revealed that Deku is the first and only user of One For All who is able to access the quirks of the previous users. Right. So by Bakugo going back in time, he's essentially allowing Deku in the future to access his explosion quirk. Horikoshi has made it abundantly clear that Deku has been studying Bakugo ever since they were kids. And for those of you that have seen the anime, you'll know that Deku's actually copied a few of his moves already. If anyone could use the explosion quirk as good as Bakugo, it's Deku. And the reason Deku is able to have one for all after Shigaraki taking it is because Eri has rewound his body back into a time when he had it. And this is by no means a stretch, as we saw during the overhaul arc that Eri rewound Deku's body to allow him to use 100% of one for all. Well, and that was hurt. when she had zero training with her quirk. Additionally, by Bakugo going back in time, his spirit will be able to appear as a vestige inside One For All in the future. And sort of like having Thor's hammer, I believe that if Shigaraki possessed the One For All quirk, he wouldn't actually be able to use it to its full potential. The reason I say that is that One For All was created and cultivated to defeat All For One. So because Shigaraki is All Might's apprentice, there's no way he's going to have access to all the cool features of the quirk. For example, accessing previous quirks, or seeing all the memories of its previous users. Now, about this grand plan with Nanashimura and Deku and Bakugo, the sequence of events that we've seen so far would lead to the final battle of My Hero Academia. Because Bakugo was the second user, he is now a vestige within the quirk, and Bakugo's plan is to lead both Deku and Shigaraki to a specific location where they can duke it out. Remember, at this point Shigaraki has destroyed superhuman society, and he has an entire army to command. He's essentially a king, and a king never goes anywhere alone. But the vestige of Bakugo will somehow trick Shigaraki into going to a location where Deku will also be. And crucially, Shigaraki will have to be alone. This would at least give Deku a fighting chance of defeating Shigaraki and returning society this, back this to the world. This man is predicting the entire Unlike rest Tomura, of the show. Deku has access to all the quirks within One for All. Could you imagine this fight? One One For All user with access to all the quirks against Shigaraki who has access to both One For All and the Decay quirk. It would just be the best final battle that you could possibly imagine. And regardless of how the fight between Deku and Shigaraki turns out, the fact remains is that it was all set into motion by Bakugo and Nanashimura. With Bakugo being the secret hero and because Bakugo went back in time, he had the benefit of not only giving Deku explosion but ensuring the timeline remained intact and that One For All was created. And with that, we've come to the end of this theory. As you can see, it draws a lot on the story points that Horikoshi has introduced. For ex so I will, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop it right there for a second. We have five minutes, about five minutes left of this theory. I'm gonna address some things that I'm, so a lot of this does seem like a stretch because like, he's basically saying a lot of this that's already set in motion is because of Bakugo and and because of Nana, I guess. But like at the same time, like I get I don't know if, I, if it's me being confused, but it just seems like something happened during his time that they were that even gave them the idea to go back to make sure that everything still happened like. Like, I don't know, like, that, that, that. that's why, that's why it's, I don't know, like, the silhouette is definitely very, very, very close to Bakugo, but the reason behind it all, I mean, I guess, I don't know, maybe in his time, like, I'm trying to make sense of it right now, because if he's trying to lead Deku to fight Shigaraki, I'm guessing that maybe... Somewhere along the lines in Bakugo's timeline, the future Bakugo. Let me. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, Shiguraki wins. And so then, therefore, Bakugo is the one 
that for some reason gets sent back. Maybe maybe Midoriya dies. But at the, but you have to think at the same time, Midoriya. If you think about the whole entire story of My Hero Academia, the story is being narrated by Deku, low key. Like the story itself spoils the story. Ever, ever, like right from the beginning, Midoriya says, like a million different times all throughout when he narrates, he goes, "This is a story about how about how I became the greatest hero of all time." Like my guy, like he straight up tells us, like all of this, all of the events that we're that we're witnessing is being told via a future Deku. So I'm like, this is kind of where I have to like, I'm not debunking this at all because again, we have five minutes left of this theory, but I see some minor holes in this just off of the basics of, you know, what I just said, like Midoriya straight up already went on record saying like, this is the story of how I became the greatest hero of all time. Maybe that's from the standpoint of Midoriya of the current Midoriya, not the future Midoriya that actually ends up dead. And that's the reason why Bakugo is the one that gets sent back to to tell, you know, everything that he's been explaining. Like how all for one is, is, is transferable and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Maybe, maybe there is like two split timelines because of that because we all know how, you know, you know, that, that, kind, that thing kind of works. I mean, if we're looking at Dragon Ball Z, I mean, the first thing I can think of is Trunks. It's like, well, what happened with Trunks? Well, in his timeline, Goku straight up dies. They don't have the cure for the heart virus that he gets. And then systematically, one after another, all the rest of the Z Warriors die. And he's the one remaining with Gohan. And then we all know what happens. And then he takes it upon himself to go back in time to make sure that that shit don't happen to the, the rest of the Z Warriors. And then we have the rest of the story that Trunks' timeline never gets, obviously. He gets a completely different timeline. So I'm kind of, because when it comes to time, like that dude, time stuff gets very finicky and it can get confusing. It can. But if as long as it's told, if it, if it makes sense, like it, the way I'm trying to relate it to Dragon Ball Z, that's the only way I can make sense of this. But let's see the rest of this. Let's see the rest of this theory. Example, the drug trigger and the spirits of one for all and obviously Bakugo looking like a previous user of One For All. But with that said, let's get into some Twitter questions. So the first question we have is from Tana, who says that it would leave a huge time paradox since if the first user of One For All never knew how the quirk worked, it would never get to the point where Bakugo himself could learn how the quirk works. And I totally see where you're coming from, but the nature of the question is kind of flawed. And the reason I say that is because you're thinking about time in a linear fashion. As human beings, we constantly think of time as one straight line that keeps moving forward, but the concept of a causal time loop is different from this perception. In this causal loop, the timeline has always been based around Bakugo going back and telling the first user. There never was a timeline in which Bakugo wasn't the second user, so the premise of this question is flawed. Moving on, the next question asks why okay. Nanashimura would help Shigaraki, and I think what they mean is why would Nanashimura tell Shigaraki that Bakugo was a threat? And the answer to this is that Nanashimura has seen Bakugo's memories. She's seen what's motivated him to make different decisions in his life, and one of the things that motivated him to travel back in time was that the heroes heard through the grapevine that Shigaraki was looking for Bakugo because he believes that Bakugo was somehow the creator of One For All. And this is when things begin to click for the heroes, as Deku, having previously seen the vestige that looks like Bakugo, goes on one of his famous rants and convinces everyone that this is the best course of action to take. Now this next question is quite interesting. What if Bakugo intentionally modeled himself, his look and his hairstyle and everything else, after the second user of One For All? And I have a pretty simple answer to that question. If Bakugo had modeled his costume after a previous hero from god knows how long ago, right. in the exact same way that we know that Kirishima models himself after the hero known as Crimson Riot, right. and we know that Deku models himself after All Might, you'd think that Bakugo would at least once reference the famous hero who inspired his costume That's look. true. It's a bit weird for Bakugo to model himself after someone that no one knows or no one has ever mentioned. And by that same token, 
that's the same reason why I doubt it's a family member as well. Bakugo's personality is such that he wouldn't be able to keep something like that to himself. That is also like, okay. come on, guys. Yeah. This is Bakugo's personality. If he was proud enough of a previous family member or a previous hero to model his look after them, you can bet your ass he's gonna talk about that's it. True. But yeah, we all know that he, he idolizes all might. He's never mentioned another hero or a family member or anything like that. All he talks about is all him might. More than all might. Right. Now these next comments were more of a statement than a question. But I figured I should address them. So the first one says that there's nothing up until now that implies that Eri can send people back in time. To which I say, of course there is. The fact we've seen her apply time travel on people's individual bodies is pretty indicative of the fact that with actual experience, rewinding the space surrounding a person is not that far, like, it's not a big stretch. That's crazy. Okay, yeah, I, no, I see what he's saying with Eri because... If Aerie does undergo some crazy training, because like it's like he said earlier, she's only six when she does everything that she does in the manga, right? So if she actually figured out her ins and outs of her quirk, and she figured out like how to send someone back in time, and not to not to send the individual person back to a previous state, if she figures out how to send everything else around that person back in time, that's od. That this is our first hero in this story of My Hero Academia to have a time travel quirk right then and there. And it's crazy because a lot of shonen anime nowadays, there's always some sort of time travel, whatever. Black Clover, they got time magic. Naruto, I mean, did they really not? You know what? I don't even, I don't even know. I don't even want to talk about Naruto. I, but obviously, Dragon Ball Z had one. Oh wait a minute! Yes, they did have it. They had they had that they had it in Boruto. They went back into the Naruto time. So I, I I'm not bugging. They did have that happen, um, in there. Um, I don't think it happened in Bleach, but that's okay. It it didn't definitely not did not need to happen in that. So but the the, the idea here is that time travel is not an alien thing in Shonen, and Eri would be the person to have that sort of you know, ability to do so. So good shit. The fundamental nature of Eri's quirk is to rewind. That's why it's called rewind. Right. Just because she has only rewound people's bodies so far, it's simply showing us what an untrained application of her power That's, can do. See? Now, this one is quite similar, and it states that Eri's quirk is just said to work on living beings. Again, let's just take a step back here. Characters within the world of My Hero Academia, they base their decisions purely based on what they see. The only reason anyone would ever say Eri's quirk is limited to living beings is because that's all they've ever seen so right. far. And the reason they've only seen that is because she's a six-year-old child who has never trained her quirk. Okay, I like this guy. He Okay, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and say like I am on the same mental level of, of this dude, right? Because I'm not trying to like I'm not, I'm not trying to take any kind of claim to his own theory because this is his theory, full 100%, right? But I will relate to him and to and let y'all know that this is the best way to show you guys what it is like to think, completely think outside the box. And what he's saying is right on the fucking money. Saying that, we believe what is in front of us and then we make an understanding and that and we go from there. But it is only until that person or ability or whatever goes on to show us otherwise. And then that's where we get the idea to even think differently or to be like, oh wow, I never thought that. You know what I'm saying? Like that is the that's one of the best traits out of Anime especially, manga especially, is when we feel like we understand something, but we don't know everything. And then, of course, it develops and it's un it's it's explained later on in the series. And I, I hate to I hate to do this, but like another another uh, direct relation is literally how fusion worked, how how fusion worked in 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 Dragon Ball, and how we thought that doing Patara earrings, we thought that. If you did a fusion with Vitara earrings in Dragon Ball Z, we understood that as, oh, they're going to stay permanent. To the point where people even made fan manga about a what-if story if Vegito was just the main character the entire rest of the way, right? Like, if they didn't split. But then, 
all these years later, Dragon Ball Super comes out, and the reality is, even if it's a retcon or a Toriyama decided to just throw that in there just because of for plot, but the fact of the matter is, if you're a mortal, like a mortal, not immortal, but if you're a mortal being, like a Saiyan, a human being, whatever, and you're using Patara earrings, that only lasts an hour. It's not permanent. You have to be a god for that to be permanent. That it's something that we never thought of, so that when it happens in the, in the, in the series, in real time, it blows our minds. We're like, oh! Like, that's what creates the hype reactions. So, again, shout out to Turtle Quirk. I'm going to follow this dude on Twitter. He, deserve, he, he, he has earned my follow. Let's imagine it's a week from now, and Eri manages to rewind an apple. Suddenly, those same characters who said that she could only manipulate living things would go, Oh, wait, no, she could manipulate inanimate objects as well. It's purely based on what they've seen so far. Right. And the fundamental nature of rewinding things means that her quirk could be used in the future in this way. And because Eri's quirk is still in its infancy, placing limitations on it doesn't really make much sense at all. So I can't wait to see where it goes from That's, here. Oh, but regardless man. of that, I'm, I... whatever you thought about this theory or this video, please be sure to do two things. First, let me know in the comments if you think that Bakugo is the vestige. I already like the video. I know you're going to tell me to do it. I think the fact that Horikoshi has intentionally hidden this character and the design is so similar to Bakugo's silhouette, I know Horikoshi has done this for a reason. And whilst my theory might not be the exact theory, there is definitely something to do with Bakugo in here, for sure. Either that or Horikoshi is just a massive troll. And secondly, don't forget to subscribe as I know this video is going to take right. a long time to edit. So I would really appreciate your support as it's a lot of work to make these videos and put them out. Bet. Okay. Yep. You know what? I'll, I'll give him the sub too. Sub and the bell. That's very important, guys. Y'all don't believe me that I didn't do, that I didn't do it. Look. Oh. All right. I am not playing. That was a very well put video. Well put theory. Turtle quirk. You've gained all my respect. I even know I had no idea who you were. Up until now. And this theory was... Yo, th this dude put this theory out on the 21st of December. I'm now only finding out about it now. That's kind of nutty. That is very nutty. I will also... I There's one other thing that I do want to say. I want to address this when he talks about how... Horikoshi dropping hints. Now, I will say this. Creators, mangaka... You know, whoever, right? When they make a story, the good ones, right? The good ones will always drop teases, subtle, whatever, mentions. They might show us something point blank right in front of our very eyes. And we might just look through that. We might overlook it. We might not recognize that as anything. But that right there is a humongous humongous tease because it begs the question like why the fuck did this guy look like Bakugo and then you get to start thinking basically I, I, I almost feel like uh, this dude Turtle Quirk right I, I feel like part of me feels like he paid close attention to when reading this part of the manga saw this image and therefore his theory was born and I will tell you and from talking speaking from uh, uh, one theorist to another. I mean, I don't really theorize on too many things. Like, I have my Jiraiya theory. I know Jiraiya is still around, okay? Y'all can check out my video about that. But something like this, I, I beat myself up for not even paying attention to that shit because it didn't even occur to me because it's like we see, like, five of the previous users and then two of them are silhouetted. I didn't even think to even... But I was like, oh, whatever. Like, oh, I don't know if we'll ever see those. But... There's a reason why they're hiding. I, w I actually also wonder who the the first user was. It might just actually be like a brand new, you know, or a character we've never heard of. But for it to be Bakugo, and the reason why, well, why is Bakugo the sec would be the second user of All for One? Or, or One for All? Is simply because he probably told the first user. first user probably didn't even believe him. And then they might, might have been in some kind of a pinch. And then we're like, well, I'm going to test your theory. Boom. Bakugo. Second user of all for one or one for all. I keep messing it up, but like, it makes sense. Like, it makes a lot of sense when you piece it like that together. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that that should happen. Aside from this theory, I really hope 
that Dobby is definitely a show though. Or a to- uh, yeah. Right, yes, I think, yeah, I, oh, my names, I'm sorry, guys, it, like, it's all one take, there's everything going on at once right now, but you all know what I'm trying to say, I really hope that the theory with Dobby being a part of that family is is real, okay, they kind of tease it in the movie when he was going up against uh, um, Endeavor, and like, their firepower was pretty much even at one point, and then he for, kind of forced Endeavor to kind of go full blazing on his ass, and it was right in the opening of the movie, by the way, so I mean, even in the manga right now, they still, like, they kind of gave us a little, like, like, Horikoshi gave us a little tease for that, but that's basically it. So, I mean, but yeah, as far as this goes, Bakugo, bro, it makes sense. I'll give him that, but we have to wait and see how the story plays out, but I'm going to definitely be paying close attention to all this. Make sure you guys go ahead and not just like my video and sub to me, but make sure you go ahead and uh, like and subscribe to the, the Turtle Quirk right here, okay? Dude almost has 50k and his video is on the rise to a million, okay? Like, that that's a nice theory and I'm, I'm gonna definitely check out his other videos, alright? Uh, you should too. Like, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter, all that good stuff. Let me know what you guys thought about this theory and my thoughts to it. And I'll see you guys next time.